Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the K10 build, but we're jumping back in right where we left off last time. Now, in the last video you saw, we mounted up these door panels and then I also got the SGI5 Dakota Digital Box wired up in there. Now I'm going to keep with the interior theme. I'm currently in the middle of restoring the dash for this, so that's why it's not in, but as soon as that gets done, it will go in. I'm hoping that's in this video. We'll just have to play it by ear. But what I wanna jump into is the seat belts. Now, the square body Chevys, they have a decent seat belt. Sure, it's fine, but none of the options are black. You can get like red and blue and gray, I think. And I don't even remember, brown, I think you can get as well, but you can't even really get an actual black. And it's kind of a pain with those ones because they're a dual reel. So both of the belts roll in together and it just, it's not as nice of a setup. Whereas this one, like all the modern vehicles have, it's just your one singular roll and then uh, it just retracts into this roll here. So this is a set I actually picked up off eBay. Now, these are certified seat belts. They are safe to use. Yes, they were purchased on eBay, but they are a safe option. And it comes with literally everything you need to put these seat belts in. Um, it comes with two of these, one for each side, two of these, one for each side. And then it has a lap belt in the middle with its own buckle. And then it has these plates, which actually are supposed to go on the bottom if you don't have threaded holes in your floor. So these will kind of hold the seat belt in. However, I do have threaded holes in my floor from factory down in here. So I'll be using those instead. And then they have this piece that mounts up on your B pillar. And then from factory, they come with this bolt in here. And uh, the only thing that you have to do for the square body, you have to pull this bolt out, take square body bolt, stick it right in here, and then that'll bolt right into your C pillar. No issues there. And then it also comes with L brackets for these because you want these to stand up, well, like that, I guess. So you need an L bracket to go like that. So I'm gonna try and get it mounted up on this seat and then uh, just kind of see how it all goes. And then if all goes well, hopefully I can get this seat in and get the seat belts on for that seat as well. Well, the passenger side seat belt is all assembled now. Uh, I used the factory L bracket that it came with down here. And actually the bolts they supply, believe it or not, they actually thread into the welded on nuts that the square body has from factory. So that was perfect. So that's on. And then you can see I used a supplied bolt to get the retractor onto the L bracket. And then I have the other end of the seat belt just on the back side here. It's pretty tough to see, but both of them go down to the same mount there. And then if you come up, uh, I put the cover on, but it's just a factory square body bolt in there. And then the only thing with these seat belts in particular, they have, uh, I don't know if you can see it, right there, that kind of round circle, they have a plastic circle there, which basically is supposed to limit this from going in too far. So it would go down to about there and then it would stop. And there's all this extra slack in here. So what I decided to do, I just cut that plastic thing off and then now it retracts all the way back in and it all sits nice. And then I noticed with the kit, they only actually included two L brackets. So I actually had to make up another set of L brackets for my inner seat belt. So I have this buckle down here, uh, going to this L bracket down here. Again, same bolt that goes into the floor. And then we have the buckle for the middle seat coming off of this as well, which will go onto that seat obviously. And then this one comes out at a really good height and uh, it's easy to push the button from where it sits. So this is the other half of the front seat going in the K10. Now, obviously this needs to be cleaned up still. Uh, I want to find some sort of product to really bring out the gray back again. Like this is very dirty and then this is fairly clean under here. So I want to try and get it all to match and be very, very clean. Now, one thing to note with the square bodies, there's no cup holders anywhere. You can buy a couple others that will slide into the ashtray, but I've deleted that. I have a switch panel there and there's ones you can get to bolt onto the bottom of the dash, but they don't seem very sturdy and I don't really like that. And then with these 98 Chevy seats 
same thing. There is no cup holders on this uh, like the later ones have up here. So I picked up two of these. Uh, these are just off Amazon. I think they're actually for a boat application. Uh, I think that's why there's a hole in the bottom so you can drain the water out of it. But I've seen this before on higher end restorations where they'll sink them into the bench seat, like one there and one there. So I kind of want to give that a try with these. Now they are fairly large, but I think if I put like one there and one there, I think it should be all right. It'll be on a bit of an angle, but that's okay. I'm not too concerned about that. I just want cup holders, right? And then I want to cut the hole in the foam Cut the hole in the cover, obviously, and then sink this in there and then figure out a way to bolt this down through the hole in the bottom, bolt it down to the frame and then kind of pull this whole assembly down and kind of cinch the cover down into it to make it look really nice and presentable. So this cover is held on with a bunch of hog rings, so I'm going to cut some of the hog rings off so I could at least pull this cover off and out of the way and then see if this is even going to be possible. So I know it looks a little bit ugly, but uh, it turns out this is actually almost kind of meant to be. Uh, I went right where there's this line here in the seat. So I centered the cup holders on that. Then I marked where I wanted them, side to side. And then from there, just marked a three and a half inch hole, went a little bit smaller than the hole I drew, just so that it's a nice tight fit. And like, you gotta kind of push these things in there, but I'd rather be a tight fit like that. And then if you look down, you're literally right on the seat frame. So what I did, I drilled a hole. Uh, mine, I think, are 7 30 seconds. I drilled it just enough so that this machine screw, I uh, it actually just threads into it. Because this doesn't have to be super tight, right? This is just enough to hold the cup holder down and kind of squish the foam down a little bit. So turns out it's like actually right above the frame. So. I will try to find a link for these cup holders. If any of you guys have a 90s Chevy and you want to put the cup holders in your seat, this actually works out really, really well. I was not expecting this. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to pull this cover back over. I'm probably going to put a little bit of spray adhesive on here just because this cover is glued onto this seat 100% of the way. So spray some adhesive, stick this back down, and then from the top you'll be able to feel where the holes are. So I'll just pretty much cut like this and like this and then push it down and then it should be able to squish the cup holder in here and then screw it down and uh, hopefully it turns out pretty good. So here's how it looks with them all installed. And uh, I'm actually pretty impressed with how this turned out. It's not perfect. You can see there's a little bit of a gap uh, here, here, and then also in here. Like it would be nice if these cup holders were just a little bit shorter so I could kind of sink them down a little further, squish the foam a little bit more. I think it would look a little better, but it is what it is. It, uh, it looks pretty clean, honestly. And you flip this down. I like it. And it's not going to be in the way of uh, where your drinks would be. And if anything, it's uh, some support. If you got a big drink and you step on it, there you go. It's going to hit that instead of tipping over. So that's perfect. Now, the last thing I do need to go ahead and do is put the hog rings back in. I pulled all the hog rings out of here, out of here, and out of this back piece as well. So I'll go around hogging it all back together. And then um, I'll have to give this thing a real good cleaning. And then we can throw that in the truck.
So with the driver's seat pretty much ready to put into the truck, I figured it's time to uh, get the seat belt in on the other side here. Now, the one thing, I can put this in, I can put this retractor in, but this middle portion that has the buckle for the driver's seat and then the middle lap belt, I can't actually, like I can bolt this bracket to the floor, but I can't actually uh, bolt these to, to the bracket completely because this top end doesn't fit through the hole in the seat and this doesn't either. So I need to fish these in through the top of the seat, through the hole and then in, and then be able to bolt this into the truck once the seat's in the truck, which might be a little interesting. We'll have to see how that goes. But I'm gonna get these bolted up and then hopefully we can bring the seat in here and then bolt that in as well. Just like that, the seat is all in and the seat belts are hooked up. Got the shoulder belt over here and then we have the lap belt under here coming through this hole. This buckle is actually just, just long enough to fit in here. Um, you can see this buckle has actually like a plastic uh, holder so that it stays upright so it doesn't fall in this crack. But on this side, that plastic piece wouldn't fit through this hole. So I had to pull the plastic piece off so it's really just the buckle and then the, uh, the actual belt and then bolt it down to the bracket behind the seat. And then that's the same idea with this one. They both fit through the hole perfectly. One thing to note with this sub box that I made, um, this middle seat actually hits it when it goes up. Now, if you slide the seat all the way forward, you can get this to fold all the way back. Then you can slide the seat right back to where it was, but you can't actually move the seat where you want it when this is all the way back as far as it can go. So I didn't really plan for that when I built the box. I kind of didn't even think about it, but I'm glad I can still figure out a way to flip it up. So that's going to be a wrap on today's video. If you liked what you saw, be sure to like this video. Be sure to comment if you have any questions or concerns. I'll try to uh, remember to put that link in the description for those cup holders because they actually worked really well. I'm not too sure what's coming up in the next video. I actually finished the dash pad recently. Um, I did decided not to make a video on it because there's so much sanding and bodywork that went into that. It was so tedious and time consuming. I really didn't even want to make a video because it's just not that interesting to watch. It's boring to do, it's boring to watch. So I didn't even really, didn't film too much of it and didn't want to make a video out of it. But it is finished up, it's sitting in the other shops. So. That might be going in in the next video if I can get the right supporting parts like the vents and the trim and all that. So we'll see what I do there. But if you're a fan of this type of content, be sure to subscribe to the channel because like I said, we got a lot of K10 content coming up soon. I really want to get this truck wrapped up soon. So with that being said, we're going to see you guys in the next one.